Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to school. Hope you had a great break. Today is Monday, November 29th. Uh, we've got a short day today and so um, we're gonna be in lesson 3.1 and uh, the warm up today is we've got some new information. So we get this email from uh, Dr. Jackie Lewis. Remember, she's the professor that looked at the two rock samples, um, one the Rocky Mountain sample from the boy and the sample of the Great Plains rock from the girl. And she's telling us that we have new information. We now know that the magma that formed the Rocky Mountains cooled underground. So this is not volcanic rock that, that formed when lava cooled above ground, it actually formed underground. And so your question in 3.1 warm up is what are your initial thoughts about this new information? What additional information do you think you would need in order to evaluate the claim? So in class we talked about how, just kind of a reminder because it's been a little bit, that claim number one said sediment that formed from the Great Plains came from the rock of the Rocky Mountains. So we know that there was Rocky Mountains first, then there was weathering and that created uh, sedimentary rock when that sediment compacted and cemented. Or claim number two, the sediment, sedimentary rock formed first, and then there was weathering, kind of like what happened with Devil's Tower, that maybe there was weathering that happened, and then that um, rock for the igneous rock uh, kind of weathered away, or the sediment weathered away and eroded, and then left the Rocky Mountains. So what information do we need to know? We, we've got one more chapter and we need to figure out basically how did this magma that cooled underground, how did it get to the surface? So we need to know how can rock that is cooled underground move up to where it can be weathered, okay? Or how can sedimentary rock move down to where it can be melted? So our chapter three question is how could rock from one of the regions have transformed into a different type of rock in the other region? Uh, we've got an article that we're gonna read and annotate today called The Oldest Rock Formations on Earth. Before we do that, I wanna let you know that we're gonna be talking about metamorphic rock. This is a different kind of a rock. And um, let me show you the definition. So metamorphic rock is a type of rock formed when heat or pressure deep underground changes existing rock. So sedimentary rock and igneous rock can turn into metamorphic rock when it is exposed to heat or pressure underground. I wanna remind you of key concept number one. It says different rocks are made in different ways. And so if we look at the three different types of rocks, you'll see that they're different because they're made in different ways. Sedimentary rock is made when sediment is compacted and cemented together. Igneous rock is made when magma is cooled and hardened. And metamorphic rock is made when heat or pressure changes an existing rock. So here's the crazy thing. Sedimentary rock, igneous rock, and even metamorphic rock can get transformed into metamorphic rock, a different type of rock, when it is exposed to heat or pressure. We're gonna get do a, a sim of that um, tomorrow so you can kind of understand exactly what's going on underneath the earth's surface. But for now, uh, I just want you to go ahead and there's a copy of the article in Schoology. It's rock transformation, or I'm sorry, go ahead and make a copy of that, put that in your rock transformation folder in Good Notes, and you're gonna read and annotate. Here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to write this investigation question on the top of the article. We're gonna do our annotations or reading and annotations a little bit differently today. We're gonna to focus a little bit more on what exactly you're going to highlight and um, notes that I want you to take kind of in your annotations. And the investigation question is how do rock formations move between the surface and Earth's interior? Remember, a rock formation is one large area of rock. Uh, it's not just one single rock. It's like an entire, like think of the Grand Canyon is one rock formation. Or um, honestly, the Rocky Mountains are a rock formation. It's one 
it's like a huge area of one type of rock. And so we're going to find out how these rocks either move to the surface or how they move down to the interior, which is exactly what we were talking about in this little diagram. How can rock that is cooled underground move up? And how can rock that is on the surface go down below the surface where it can be weathered? All right, so here's what I want you to do. Focus on answering that investigation question um, as you read the article. So as you annotate, I want you to show your thinking as you read. You're going to make little notations in the side, you know, think about like your key concept, think about prior information, think about things that are interesting, ask questions when you find the answer, circle the answer, draw an arrow back up to where your question was, make connections to previous knowledge. The difference is today, I don't want you to highlight anything except for the information that answers the investigation question. Okay, so don't highlight vocabulary words. Don't highlight, ooh, this is interesting. Don't highlight somebody's name. Only highlight where you find the answers to the investigation question. Okay, lastly, here's the homework for today. Uh, just read and annotate the article. It's just two sides of one page. Uh, so it, you should get finished with that fairly quickly. And then I've got a discussion question in today's folder in Schoology. So just go ahead and answer that discussion question, and that's due tomorrow before class. Let me know if you have any questions, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back soon.